were Salzburg from 1937 to 1938. During these years, the mountain had to absorb some extremely substantial changes. In just a few months, Reichsleiter Martin Bormann transformed the former high-altitude health resort into an extraterritorial restricted area, which was also declared the Fuhrer's headquarters in the following years. This documentary will show for the first time, on the basis of partly previously unpublished film footage, both the extensive construction work at Obersalzburg and landscape shots of Obersalzburg and the surrounding mountains. Whenever Hitler stayed at the Berghof, extended walks were taken in the surrounding area every day, summer and winter. Here is the area of today's golf course, below Hitler's Berghof. Here is the path to the Muslana Tea House, which Eva Braun frequently documented in her video legacy. Hitler's close relationship with Obersalzburg dates back to the early 20s. Whenever government business permitted, Hitler returned to the mountain, and so it's hardly surprising that the closest leadership staff also settled here. The country house of Hermann Göring. As early as 1934, Göring became Reichsjägermeister, the Reich's forest master, and the highest commissioner for nature conservation. Goring himself, a passionate hunter, had a hunting ground in the Ruit, a former alpine meadow area above the Obersee. Like the Obersalzberg, the Ruit was declared a restricted area, and in 1934, Hermann Goring declared it a nature reserve of special order. Here, an old view of the Bodenlien, with Hockhalter and Ritter Alpa in the background. On the far left is the Waltzmann. The greenhouses were built on Bormann's initiative and were intended to provide self-sufficiency for the new Obersalzburg residents. In the winter months, however, the sun only shines for a few hours on the eastern slopes of Obersalzburg, and the cultivation of vegetables in the greenhouses provided little harvest. Mainly flowers were planted, which were used for decorations of the tables at the Berghof and Platterhof. At Easter time, the annual Easter egg hunt was held here for the children of Obersalzburg. Eva Braun organized this event. These photos show the guest house, which was located below the Platterhof. Today, the building houses the Documentation Obersalzburg. The Old Platterhof as previously mentioned, Hitler was already at Obersalzburg in the early 20s, here as a guest in the Platterhof, then called Pension Moritz. He met regularly with publicist Dietrich Eckhart. The more than 20 years older Eckhart was primarily important as an anti-Semitic ideologue, mentor, and provider of ideas to Hitler. For this reason, a room was dedicated to the poet and writer after the conversion of the Pension Moritz into the Platterhof. Located directly above the Platterhof was the Kampfhoist, a small wooden cabin where Hitler wrote the second part of his book Mein Kampf after his imprisonment in the fortress of Landsberg. As early as 1936, Martin Bormann acquired the Pension Moritz for the party and converted it into a 150-bed hotel for deserving Volksgenossen in 1937. The conversion was carried out in several construction phases and was not completely finished until 1943. The Volkshotel, located in the middle of the Führer restricted area, was later incorporated into the organization Kraft durch Freude, which means Strength Through Joy, or KDF for short. And from then on, a stay there was to be affordable even for the average Volksgenossen.
This picture shows the view from House Bormann to the Bodner Hill above the Hotel Zunterken. In the middle of the picture, you can see a wooden cable car support for the transport cable car for construction of the SS Barracks, then the Hotel Zumturken, and behind it, the Berghof. The bottom station of the material ropeway was located on the Kirlienfeld, near the Unteral settlement. In the center of the picture, the Fremenlien can be seen. At that time, the hangmen of Berchtesgartner land lived in this over 500-year-old farmhouse. Meanwhile, construction work on the SS Barracks, which began in April 1937, was in full swing. At times, more than 2,000 workers were employed, who were housed in specially set up workers' barracks at Bodner Hill, which can be seen well in the background here. For entertainment purposes, a theater hall was built on the Antenberg Hill for the workers. As already mentioned, Bormann wanted to realize his idea of self-sufficiency in the extraterritorial restricted area. As a former farmer, the idea of building an agricultural estate was quickly born. Below the Berghof, on the site of today's golf course, construction work on an estate began in 1937. At the same time, the facility was also intended to serve as a model for agricultural model farms in the Reich. In order to realize his megalomaniac idea, Bormann pumped vast sums of Reichsmark into the project, which, however, could only generate modest profits until the end. The winter of 1937-38 only had a minor impact on construction work in the Ober Salzburg, so that in a relatively short construction period, and not least due to the use of an exceptionally large workforce, most of Bormann's construction work was completed by late summer 1938. Ober Salzburg was unrecognizable. Most of the old fiefs were bought up or their owners were forcibly expropriated the farms then torn down. A land register entry from 1945 shows the following ownership shares of Ober Salzburg. More than 10,000 hectares fall to Bormann or the party, 8 hectares to Adolf Hitler privately, and the comparatively small area of 1 hectare to Hermann Göring.
The Berghof was now also ready. To increase security, the entire area was declared a Führerspergebiet, a Führer secure zone, and guarded accordingly. Access was only possible with an authorization permit. From then on, Hitler had a prestigious house at his disposal, which he used to receive diplomats and state guests. But groups of Hitler youth and the BDM were also invited, as here. Hitler's personal photographer, Heinrich Hoffmann, here on the left in the picture next to Martin Bormann, knew how to skillfully stage the idyllic mountain scenery and the Nazi propaganda presented the people with numerous pictures and photo albums with titles such as Hitler, Away from Everyday Life, and Hitler as No One Knows Him. Here is another picture with Hoffman, and next to him, Dr. Fritz Tote, the General Inspector for German Infrastructure. Reichsleiter Bormann can be seen in the center of the picture. In 1938 and 39, Hermann Göring also had his country house enlarged and extended in three stages, however not nearly as elaborate as Bormann did. In the summer of 1939, a swimming pool was added. The Eckerbeekel on which Göring's house stood was henceforth called Göring Hill. At the foot of Goring Hill, Goring's adjutant office was built in 1939. In the background, the residential buildings for the employees of the Obersalzberg administration. The Kielstein Bridge and also Gutshof Bridge were elaborate projects, the arches, Cast from concrete were covered with natural stone. The difficulty was that both bridges were located on inclines and were also sloped. Thus, the stone masons had to adjust every single stone. The Dalstenwinkel Road had been built as an access road for the Kielstein project. The access road was initially via Rossfield High Ring Road. After just a couple of miles, the route branches off to the right in the direction of Kielstein. The route continues past the former Kiel Alms. Due to the steep terrain, the last section was laid out in serpentines and leads up to the bus turnaround plate, about 125 meters below Kielstein House. The SS barracks were almost completed by now. Here, the paving work on the parade ground. On the eastern side of the building complex, a service car hall was set up for the Führer's drive crew. Next to it, i.e. here on the left in the picture, was the driver's residence. The construction work for this turned out to be extraordinarily difficult since the terrain had to be excavated to a depth of 22 yards on the slope side. More than 5,000 cubic yards of excavated material had to be removed for the building's foundation. The entrance portal of the team building was decorated with a relief by the sculptor Arno Brecher. 
hear the artist at the last work on his sculpture. In 1939, a large part of the barracks complex was completed. Here, the topping out ceremony for the parade ground. In 1938, construction work on the agriculture estate was in full swing. Bormann had the Gutshof extended again and again, and new buildings were added. However, Bormann's agricultural research facility was not completed until 1941. The entire area comprised about 200 hectares of meadow and arable land, which, however, was not very productive due to its altitude. The yields of the Hoflinger breeding the pig breeding and also the dairy farming could not generate the required maintenance costs. Even the apple juice press, to which a lot of apples were bought, could not change this. The estate complex also included apiaries, waterworks buildings, a blacksmith shop, and various other buildings. From 1942 onward, the estate was profitable, but without taking into account the enormous construction costs. During the bombings in 1945, the manor was only slightly damaged and is still one of the few buildings from the Nazi period that has been preserved. Finally, a flight over the Führer's headquarters. The most impressive building on the Obersalzburg is undoubtedly the Eagle's Nest, whose construction history and use is described in a detailed documentation, which you can also see on our channel. Below us, the Dalsenwickel Road, which at that time was one of the most important feeder roads to the Kilstein project. In the center of the picture, the theater hall, below left, the manor house. On the lower left, the House Beckstein, then the Berghof. Above it, 
the square building arrangement of the SS barracks with the workers' barracks. The transformation of a mountain under the swastika.